Hi there, I'm Lucy Haslam, I'm an illustrator and I've had a studio space at the island for two years now. I really love publishing comics, uh, it's a big passion of mine, uh, so I thought for the island's open day, which is on the 1st to 3rd of October, it would be nice to make a video about how I do that. So I think a lot of people get put off drawing comics because it can seem pretty daunting and that you know you need a really official script and stuff written out before you begin. But comics can be anything, it's just the relationship between images and text. So I like to go in completely the opposite direction and let all of the images do all of the work for me. The way I do this is by using a key image. Um, so this is going to be the base of our comic, so it's going to help us determine what we want the subject to be and the atmosphere and all that. Um, so you want to find an image that you find really interesting and that you want to explore. I've been seeing a lot of weirdly fascinating videos about hamster mazes recently, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw the hamster uh, entering the maze. If you have trouble thinking of an image at this stage, I'd recommend uh, going for a walk, or watching a film, or you know, looking at some art, just anything where you can find really interesting imagery that you can pull from. Now we have the key image as a base, we want to try and develop it as far as we can. So think about how you can push the qualities of the image to express what direction you'd like your comic to go in. For example, what is the atmosphere or emotion? Uh, so here I've drawn the hamster in a very dark, scary maze, but actually I kind of got too attached to the hamster so I don't want him to be sad, so we're going to try and draw him in a happy environment instead. Another question is, what is the subject? So it might be someone or something different from what's in your key image, but still have a relationship to it. So what about the owner of the hamster? Another consideration is the setting, and I'm sorry I did draw this one off camera, um, but mazes are usually used as tests, so what about if the owner was a researcher? Keep pushing and refining your image until you're excited to find out where the scene will go. I like the imagery of the big hand coming down to scoop up the hamster, and combined with the happy atmosphere, what if the comic was from the hamster's point of view, so everything was really fuzzy, and it was about the love that they have for their owner. And here's the final version of the key image, which I've just drawn out again, uh, nice and quick. Keep things loose and rough, uh, the goal here is to keep surprising yourself. Now we're going to start generating more visuals for our comic, and we're going to do that by forgetting everything we know about making a plot. <laughs> we're going to start to pull areas out of our image based on how cool they look, and just go from there. So here I really like the shape of the maze as a visual, and want to focus in on that. So what if we squash it flat, and use the maze to fill a whole page, and then maybe it's surrounding the hamster's owner instead of the hamster. Or the maze could be endless, and huge, and multi-storied. Uh, yeah, the key here is to be rough, and just keep drawing out anything that comes to mind. Don't edit yourself yet. Here I really like the focus on touch between the owner and the hamster. When you hold a hamster it starts panicking, and the imagery of a hamster running about all over is fun. That also visually looks like lots of hamsters, and it's fun to see all these circles filling the space. So what if this hamster wasn't alone? What if a lot were trying to get through the maze like a race, and the prize was being held by the owner? One of the key features in a maze is you can't see what's behind the corner, which is a great source of visual tension. So do we have a surprise waiting for the hamster? What if the surprise is more hamsters, and we can have the maze gradually fill with circles as they find each other? You'll begin to discover what emotions you'd like to express through the rest of your comic. Do you want to shock your reader, make them feel happy, inspire them to build a hamster maze? You can also begin to consider how dramatic you want your comic to be, so big changes from your key image will end up being more dramatic, and small changes will end up being more introspective or internal character changes. When I said about letting your key image surprise you can come into play, uh, I accidentally drew the owner as looking at the clipboard instead of the hamster, so they're coming off as a little cold. So here I start digging into the visual push and pull between the warm hamster and the cold owner, and how the contrast between the two would be interesting. I covered this part with my hand, sorry, but uh, I then extend this to the layout of the pages themselves. 
So what if half the page was cold hard lines and the other half was soft? So yeah, just keep going until you fill the page up and you can't think of anything else that looks really cool. Now we have our big page of visuals, we can start pulling them together into a story, first by highlighting the ones we like best. Then we can start making the in-between connections that will form the basis of the plot. So what needs to happen to get the subject from one scenario to the next? Or for the atmosphere to change? Your key image doesn't have to be the first one you start with and don't be afraid to discard images, add more ones in or change them, it's just about what feels right and what looks fun. From here you'll have a wobbly version of your comic's narrative with all the emotional journey and the story beats laid out ready to go. So my comic has ended up about a hamster who dreams of meeting the love of their life, who is their owner, a disinterested researcher, who keeps the hamster in an endless maze. The hamster's soft, love-clouded worldview is slowly eroded into harsher shadows and lines as the comic goes on. I'm sorry, it ended up sad anyway. Before you start planning out your comic for real, it's important to take a step back and have a quick think about how you want your finished comic to take shape. So will you be sharing it online, or printing it out? What size will it be? Will it be in black and white, or colour? How long will it be? These can all affect how your comic will be able to express itself. For example, if you're sharing your comic on social media, you'll want a shorter length, big square panels, but you can go crazy with the colour. Thinking about this now stops you from drawing your comic out and then having to remake it down the line when it's not quite right. For this comic, I think I'd want it to be in colour so that we can properly show the difference in warmth between the hamster and the owner. So as of before, uh, what might be best for that is to put it on social media, uh, so that means big panels, but fairly short in length. Now we're ready to do our thumbnailing, which is the process of planning out the pages of your comic. So here be loose and rough, both for time's sake and so you don't get too attached. Here I'm starting by planning out the layout of the pages themselves. Uh, so some of these options are a bit too complicated for social media, so I've gone with just one panel per page. But I do like the idea of having a border around the panel, because uh, this helps to emphasise the closed nature of the maze. Next I'm moving on to the first page, where I want to introduce the hamster. So I've gone through a few options, but they're the star of the show, so I want them nice and clear, so they'll be big in the middle of the panel. Then I move on to page 2, to set up the threat of the maze. You should also start adding your dialogue in here as well, um, mainly so that you can make sure that each panel has enough space for the words you want to put in there. And page 3, where I have part of our key image, with the hand reaching down to the hamster to set up their connection to each other. With the mailing here, the goal is to fill in the gaps between those images we've already chosen. It can feel overwhelming thinking about the whole of your comic, so I find picturing it as making your way from one image to the next helps keep you on track. If you're brand new to comics and find thumbnailing a bit difficult, I'd recommend reading everyone's starter guide, Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud, and then just reading as many comics as you can. You'll start to get a natural feel for it over time. I like to do a couple versions of thumbnails, uh, for example here are two versions from a previous work. So yeah, don't worry about getting it completely right the first few times. What's most important is to just get it out on paper and then from there you can you know, edit it and remix it until you get the final version of your thumbnails that you're happy with. Finally, let's draw the comic. Uh, so this is the worst part, it's gonna take forever, I'm sorry, it just always does. Uh, here are a few of my finished pages from other comics uh, as examples. My advice here would be don't be afraid to change things even at this stage. Uh, when you're drawing a work for hours, it can lead you to a new perspective on the comic. So always take a few moments and, you know, just take a step back. Okay, now it's six months later and we've finally finished drawing the whole comic. We can do those last little bits to get it ready to go out into the world. If you draw your comics on paper, uh, this means scanning them in at 300 dpi and adjusting them on Photoshop or any other graphics program that you like using. There's lots of tutorials about adjusting images, so I won't go too deep into detail here, but just make sure that you have your pages set up right above all else. So that's all these bits here. 
This also of course stands if you're drawing comic pages digitally, but you'll have done this in the last stage. Basically, with adjusting them, you want to check that your pages are nice and clear and that there's nothing on there that shouldn't be. I add any text to the pages at this stage as well. I think a lot of the time I'll end up changing it slightly or even removing it if I think that it will better suit the feel of the page or that the imagery can stand up by itself in the end. Again, don't feel like you have to stick with something that isn't working just because it's there. Finally, your comic is ready. Now you just have to start sharing it. This can be super immediate by just posting it online. Or if you'd like to make some physical copies, uh, you can make some yourself. You can print it at home, so using a printer, so your own or a library, uh, with a ruler, folder, scalpel and a long arm stapler. That's kind of all you need. But you may want to get it professionally printed and bound. Uh, each printer is different though, so check the guidelines. But Comic Printing UK has some really great templates that I'd recommend having a look at if you've never set up a comic before. Again, there's lots of tutorials on this for different kinds of comics and graphics programs, but my tip would be to always remember that a print of comics, total pages always have to be a multiple of four. So thank you for your time, that was everything. I hope you've enjoyed this brief yet dense look into comics and that you're excited to make your own or try a different way of creating one. Thanks as well to the island for having me for their open studios, so remember to check out the events on the 1st and 3rd of October, and if you'd like to get in touch, my details are up now. See ya!